All right, so you brought us a pretty interesting one today. Yeah. This uh, recall on the 2023 Audi RS e-tron GT. Now, I know you're super into this thing. Oh, yeah. And with 637 horsepower and a price tag, what is it, like north of $140,000? Yeah. This isn't your, you know, average electric grocery getter. No, not at all. And this recall, I think it's really caught everybody's attention because it kind of gets at this this crucial aspect of these high performance EVs, which is thermal management. Thermal management. Now, for those of us who, I don't know, maybe need a bit of a refresher. Yeah. What does that what does that actually mean like in the context of these cars? Totally. So these high performance EVs, right, they're essentially pushing the boundaries of battery technology. You want more power, you want faster charging, all that's exciting, but it generates a ton of heat. And thermal management is essentially how engineers make sure that that heat doesn't, well, you know, cause a meltdown. Literally, okay. it involves these really intricate cooling systems that keep the batteries in that sweet spot, you know, that safe, optimal temperature range. So this isn't just like the, the car getting a little hot when it's, you know, a hot day outside. This is like the integrity of the whole system. Yeah, exactly. Think of it this way. If the battery is the heart of the EV, right, the cooling system, that's its circulatory system. I like that. And just like our bodies, you know, we need to maintain that stable temperature. These batteries, they rely on this really delicate balance of cooling to perform well yeah. and to avoid, well, you know, catastrophic failure. So in the case of this Audi recall, then what part of this circulatory system are we talking about here? What's, what's the issue? So it's a faulty component within the battery's cooling system. Um, now, without getting too far into the weeds, this component is really crucial for regulating the flow of coolant. Okay. And in a lot of these high-performance EVs, we're talking liquid coolant, similar to what you'd see in your gas-powered car. Right, right. But it's specifically designed for this whole electric powertrain setup. So if this coolant's not flowing properly because of this this faulty component. You're catching on. Yeah, so that can lead to some overheating, especially when you're really pushing the car, like on the Autobahn. Yep. And that overheating, it can mean reduced performance, yep. long-term damage to the battery, and worst-case scenario. Fire. Yeah, it's a possibility. Although in Audi's case, they haven't actually reported any fires. Right. Directly because of this, at least not yet. But, you know that potential is there, and I think that's why they are taking this so seriously. Well, and speaking of taking it seriously, what is Audi actually doing about this recall? They're doing a lot. We're talking inspections of every single car that might be affected, free repairs, and in some cases, they're even swapping out entire sections of the cooling system. Okay. I mean, they're not messing around. No, it sounds like they're being pretty thorough, which is good. Yeah. But is this, is this just an Audi thing? Oh. Or are we seeing other, you know, these high performance EV manufacturers having similar issues? That's the million dollar question, right? Right. And it's a really important one to unpack, I think. So other high performance EVs then, are they having like similar issues or is Audi, you know, are they kind of an outlier here? Well, it's not just Audi, unfortunately. I mean, we're seeing a bit of a pattern here, especially with these cars that are like really aiming for that supercar level performance. Okay. Um. You know, Porsche Taycan owners, for example, they've reported some some concerns about the cooling system as well. Yeah. And then there's Tesla, of course. They've had, well, let's just say they've had their fair share of challenges with thermal management. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially with that Model S Plaid, you know, the one that's all about breaking speed records. Right, right, yeah. Okay, so this is starting to feel like less like, you know, a few isolated incidents and more like oh, like a trend. Is there something, I don't know, inherently difficult about keeping these high-powered EV batteries cool? Like, is it just is it just really hard? It really comes down to, like, pushing the limits of the technology, right? I mean, think about it. These batteries, they're not, like, fundamentally different from what you'd find in your phone or your laptop. Sure. But when you need to, you know, harness enough power to move two tons of metal at crazy speeds... Yeah. Suddenly that battery's under a lot of stress. Yeah. So more power, faster charging, even that regenerative braking, that all generates heat. Gro right? <laughs> it's like it's like trying to you know, keep a jet engine cool while it's running at full throttle. Yeah, that's a that's a great analogy. And and the thing is, we're, you know, relatively early in the whole the whole evolution of these high performance EVs. Yeah. The technology is changing so fast mm -hmm. and engineers are constantly trying to figure out like how to balance power and range right. with keeping things from, you know, melting <laughs> down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So where does that leave, I guess, where does that leave us, the consumers? I mean, it sounds like these, these teething problems, maybe they're going to be around for a while. It's definitely possible, yeah. But, you know, it doesn't mean you should, like, completely write off high-performance EVs. Right. Knowledge is power, right? <laughs> so if you're thinking about about taking the plunge on one of these these incredible cars. I mean, it's it's worth doing your research. Okay, so so for those of us who aren't you know ready to to give up on this dream of of silently flying down the road, right? What kind of research should we be doing? Like, what what should we be looking for? Well, I think first of all, don't just get you know sucked in by the horsepower I'm in, in zero to sixty times, right? Really dig into the the specs. Look at the battery cooling system. You know, is it air cooled? Is it liquid cooled? Is it some kind of hybrid thing? Because okay. each approach, you know, has its pluses and minuses, especially when we're talking about this level of performance. So, so we should be like looking past the yeah. the marketing stuff mm -hmm. and really trying to understand how how these systems actually work. Yeah, and and don't be afraid to to go beyond like the manufacturer's website, right? Yeah. I mean, read independent reviews, check out online forums, maybe even talk to like a mechanic who specializes in EVs Okay. because they can give you a, a more realistic perspective, you know? Right. I mean, real world driving that often reveals, you know, issues that, that don't show up in, in some controlled test. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's like a car might, you know, get get a perfect score on the track. Yeah, exactly. But how does it do, you know, on a six hour road trip in the middle of summer with the AC cranked up? Exactly. Like those are the things you want to you want to know. For sure. Yeah. And that's that's why I think those forums can be so helpful because yeah. you've got owners who are like really passionate sharing their their real world experience, good and bad. Yeah. So you can get the, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. It sounds like it sounds like knowledge is power. Especially with, you know, how quickly things are changing in the EV world. Yeah, for sure. This recall, you know, it's it's a little concerning, but it's it's kind of a good reminder, I think. It is, yeah. To, to do your research. Yeah. To not just, you know, jump in head first. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it shows that, that even with these, like, cutting edge cars, yeah. you know, there are going to be some bumps in the road. Sure. But, you know, the, the cool thing is that, this technology, it's it's constantly evolving. Yeah. So these challenges, you know, they're going to lead to to better designs, better solutions down the road. So it's it's a process. So a bump in the road, but but not a not a stop sign. Exactly. Exactly. And it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. It's a really exciting time to be into cars. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, on that note, I think we'll we'll wrap up this deep dive. Until next time, keep those electrons flowing.